What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another unboxing video brought to you by Bearded Kid Jews of Boxing Reviews. You know, if you guys like the channel, hit the subscribe button, give the video a like, you know, share with anybody you think will like the content of this channel. Also, hit that bell notification so you are notified right away when my videos drop so you can watch them right away. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, everybody, for the support, you know, the continued support. You know, we are creeping ever so close to the 500 subscribers mark. So thank you, thank you. Um, can't wait to give my next giveaway. It's going to be great. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's just a little thank you from me to you kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, but, yeah, today we have a X Plus unboxing review to do. Uh, it's been sitting <laughs> uh, kind of marinating a while um, <laughs> here at uh, the headquarters of the Bearded Kaiju. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's been coming in, coming out to kind of trying to find time for everything um but yeah it's about time to get this guy reviewed and everything like that because i think he's a sleeper i really do um i think a lot of people sleep on this particular character uh i, I think they sleep on this particular movie um so i'm really excited to put this out there uh for everybody to see and stuff like that maybe you guys can uh, learn about something you know new that you don't know or you know maybe you'll check out the movie after this review or maybe even hunt down the figure who knows you know whatever um but yeah enough rambling let's get right into it all right guys here it is uh we are going to be talking about the x plus fsl 30 centimeters mogera from 1957's movie the mysterians and this is their destructive robot that the mysterians used in the movie mogera um as you can see it is the rick exclusive with the rick exclusive yellow sticker on it and yeah, this is your typical 30 centimeter box. I love it. Um, it's just a nice picture of the actual figure, you know, in color, you know, and everything like that. Everything else is pretty plain Jane about the box and everything. Um, but at least, you know, we get a nice color picture um, of the figure and stuff like that. Uh, just to kind of make it pop a little bit more, you know, like I've said before, hundreds of times on this channel here, uh, that's, you know, sometimes in the boxes mean a lot, you know, to really stand out from others and stuff like that. And I just... I like color. I like uh, a cool design on the box, not just a brown box with a, a print printed on it, you know, black and, and brown, you know, kind of thing. So um, I like when uh, you kind of see this stuff, but this is a typical 30 centimeter style box and everything. So really great to see. Uh, I love it. So not too much to go over with that. Just love seeing it. But yeah, uh, let's get right into the figure. All right, guys, here he is in all his glory. Uh, it's it's a tremendous figure. It really, really is. Um, I love it. It's it's different, like I said, from a lot of other figures that uh, you typically see in everything. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the design um, of the actual suit and the figure himself. Um, but I, I love it. Like, it's absolutely fantastic. It's phenomenal. Um, I love everything about this. Uh, I used to actually have the 25 centimeter figure of this particular Mogera from 57 Mysterians. Um, but I've since got rid of that, sold it to a good friend of mine, uh, Joe Myers. Um, and I really wanted to get this 30 centimeter because, um, I've said this on the channel before, you know, I went through a, a purge with all my, thir uh, 25 centimeter figures where I was getting rid of them and only keeping 30 centimeters and above. So got rid of the, uh, my 25 thinking, yeah, it was going to be easy to find it and everything. Um, but it's, it's hard. It's been hard to really find this guy. And if he did by some chance, uh, pop up. Uh, I didn't have the money for it. Like I either spent, you know, money on other things and I just kind of had a pass on him and everything. And um, it's it's about time I finally got him because I've been looking for him for quite a while now. Um, just like I said, thinking that I could get him uh, really easy and he was very accessible, but he has not been. Um, I think it's because it's there's not a lot of them out there, honestly. Um, it's it's just not a figure or a movie that's very talked about, uh, which is which is a shame. It really, really is because it's, it's a great movie. Uh, and this is a great figure. It's, it, it really, really is. Uh, it's perfect representation of this uh, particular figure uh, and character. It's, it's been a minute uh, since uh, I've finally been able to acquire this guy. And I'm really, really happy to get it. You know, I, I got this actually on Bayi. Uh, saw it. A, good, a friend of mine sent me the link, you know, and I immediately bought it. Um, and actually another friend of mine, uh, Michael Hamilton, was looking for the same one. And, um, you know, he was uh, nice enough to let me buy it because uh, he has seen it first. And 
you know, we just have a rule that if someone sees something first and someone else wants it, whoever saw it first gets first dibs. So he was nice enough to let me get it and everything because unfortunately he didn't uh, have the money or just couldn't get it, you know, at the time. So pulled the trigger right away. Super happy I got it. Um, but yeah, definitely a long time coming for this guy. Um, but just take a quick look at him. Um, yeah, it's just great. It's everything about this is just perfect. Um, and if you've seen the movie, if you know the character, um, you'll know that this is just the epitome of representations uh, for this particular character. Um, this this space robot uh, is just awesome. It really, really is. And it's it's a kooky design. It really is. Um, but I mean, mind you, this was in uh, 1957. Um, so he wasn't the most, uh, sexy looking robot, you know, he wasn't sleek. He wasn't thin, you know, uh, he was, he was a robot that had some hips, you know, <laughs> he really did. Um, and he was very slow, very lumbering and everything like that. Um, but yeah, just a great character overall. Um, I just love it. Like, oh man, um, here's a close up of his face. He kind of looks like a penguin. You know, to me, that's kind of what he represents uh, and everything, you know, with the, the drill kind of beak uh, kind of thing that he uses to drill underground. Um, same thing with like his arms and everything like that. I think it just helps him drill underground because um, that's what he does. Like he he comes from underground and everything. And even, you know, his front of his body kind of look like um, tank uh, treads um, and everything like that, that can kind of help him move underground, uh, real swiftly and stuff. Um, because even in the movie, like he, he emerges from the side of a mountain. And so, you know, you know, that he's coming from underground and he can move that way, um, stealthily and everything like that, than attack from underneath. So really, really cool. Um, yeah, just, just an awesome, awesome figure overall. I really do dig it. Um, yeah, it's, I, I definitely prefer this one over the 25 a lot um i just i like the pose a little bit more um i like the sculpt uh and everything compared to the 25 i'm um, 25 is great and everything but um like i said i just prefer a little bit bigger figures and stuff and mind you this is uh the fsl line so it means that it's based off of a model kit um and that's what x plus's fsl line is is that they take model kits and they actually um reproduce them as vinyl figures and stuff like that. And this is actually from the, from the Azai line, um, that, uh, they are the ones who produced the kit and everything like that. So really, really awesome. I think that's why the sculpt is phenomenal. I think the, the details are just spot on. They're crisp. They, everything looks great. Uh, I love the little hunch that he has, uh, when you're looking, cause it looks like he's looking down, you know, at, you know, anything that he's attacking or ready to, uh, demolish and stuff like that. He's more got that uh, downward look uh, just because he was a giant robot. So I really do dig it and everything. But yeah, it's it's based off of a, a, a kit uh, and everything like that. So um, just awesome. I love the X Plus FSL line. Just everything they, they come out with is just amazing. It really is. And that's a testament to all the kits that they get that they reproduce into vinyl form and stuff like that. Like Oh man, there's some great, great, amazing kit makers out there uh, in Jap and Japan and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, kudos to them, hats off to them, you know, um, it's just great. Um, and then, you know, X plus just acquires the rights to basically uh, re-release the figure in vinyl form. So uh, it's just nice because then that way we don't have to just pay for the kit and then get pay for the kit to be put together and painted and then shipped to you or, you know, if you do it yourself, you know, it doesn't take the time to do it. So, and, you know, kits are very fragile. They're resin, you know, or polystone or, or whatever kind of material. Uh, so you have fear of it breaking in transportation. So it's just nice to get this kind of stuff. Um, but you don't have to do any of that stuff. It's already painted. It's, it's already assembled. Uh, it's not as fragile as what it normally is. So it's really, really nice. So um, it, it is really great. Um, and then as you can see here. Another thing is like this little mouth jaw. Um, I don't think it moves. No, it doesn't. It just kind of sits there. I don't really know what the point of it is. Maybe, um, you know, think of this guy, you know, drilling through the ground and his head 
would be straightforward. So then maybe this thing is kind of like a uh, like a bucket, you know, from like a, a, a plow or, or something like that, where they kind of pick it up uh, and and move the dirt and stuff like that. Maybe it has something to do um, with the drill and everything like that. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's just kind of a cool little uh, aesthetically pleasing look uh, to it. Almost like, kind of looks like a mouth, but uh, obviously he doesn't have a mouth, so he's a robot. So um, obviously it has to do with something with the um, design and how it functions and stuff like that. So really, really cool. Um, big old eyes, you know, so it can see uh, everything. But yeah, just overall, just a great, great figure. Um, like I said, he he thick. He, he, he a thick boy. He got... He got he, he's got a butt. He's got hips. So, uh, but really, really cool. Uh, just love it. Like I said, this is the Rick edition. So uh, there was actually two uh, special editions to this um, that are Rick. And let's see the first one. All right. And here is the first one. We have a really cool uh, Mysterian spaceship um, that you will see in the movie. Or if you've seen the movie, you know what this is. But it's a nice little um, extra that came with it that I just love. I love extras like this. Um, I made sure to get the Rick of this guy because of this particular uh, special little feature, little uh, item that comes with the uh, figure itself. So definitely had to do that. This is just made of vinyl. You know, it's squishy and everything like that. You know, nothing on the bottom. Um, just a nice little paint job and everything. A little flat saucer and everything. So just a little cool little accessory that comes with it that I really wanted. So really really cool and then of course like i said there was two features for the rick edition and actually the second one is a light up feature so let's take a look at that right and one two three bam there it is so not nothing too crazy um it's just his lights uh light up and stuff like that uh like i said it just kind of would help him um dig underground and stuff like that but in the movie you saw that his light his eyes were illuminated and stuff like that so it's just a cool little um extra feature uh, to really bring out that uh really lifelike uh experience for you uh especially for a collector and stuff like that where you get that whole effect where his eyes are um on and bright and open so and actually uh with these this light up there's actually two options there is this option where it is just solid it doesn't turn off it doesn't do anything um it's just on and then there is a second option Which is which is uh, basically what you saw in the movie. It was lit up, but um, it kind of had that strobe effect um, that would kind of go on and off, and it kind of just made the robot a little bit more lifelike uh, and everything like that, where it was just um, pulsating like that. It was really great. It just made it look more eerie and everything when it when it was doing that. Um, just really, really great. And I didn't know this actually when I first got this. Is that I didn't know that there was two light up features for this. So <laughs> no, knowing this and finding this out is just amazing. It really is. It just adds to it. And like I said, I didn't even get this Rick uh, option because of the light up. I got it because of the uh, the spaceship and everything like that. So um, knowing that it lit up was just a bonus. Uh, like I said, I don't go for the light ups, but um, just seeing this and then knowing it has two options um, really was a treat. It put a smile on my face. It's kind of like the, uh, the Mechagodzilla, um, and everything where um, he's got the one solid light up eyes and then he has the um, the space beam, um, different color light up eyes too. So um, I just love that. And I didn't know about that either. So I just like to see or have those little um, extra little Easter eggs come up when you open a figure and you're looking at it and stuff like that. Like, holy crap, like I didn't even know about that. So that's really, really cool. So um, it's, just, it's just awesome. And I do like that, uh, you know, it sucks that it has this, you know, box and plug-in and stuff like that. But I like that the plug-in is a little bit more hidden. It's not on the back of a of a heel or a leg or anything like that. Um, I'll show you guys that it's actually kind of under his torso and it's hidden under there. So really, really cool. So you don't see it on the outside of the leg or nothing like that, nothing noticeable. And it's just nicely hidden. So I do like that. Um, you know, obviously they thought about that a little bit to try and hide it and everything, which is really appreciated and everything. So um, really, really great. And we are not done yet. Um, I have a little special something to go with this that actually lines up perfectly um, with getting this figure and stuff like that. 
some newly released figures uh, from another uh, X Plus line. And let's see them right now. All right, guys, here they are. And of course, this makes it all perfect. It really does. I mean, I couldn't have lined this up any better, honestly. Um, I give you the X Plus Toho Maniacs line Mysterians, the yellow and the orange. Um, and like I said, these were newly released uh, probably within the last um, several months, I would say. Uh, these are kind of been sitting around too on everything. And then uh, once I happened to get this guy, I was like, holy crap, like this goes perfectly. So I'm just going to do it all in one. Um, but yeah, this is super awesome. Uh, I love that these go with uh, their Mogera and everything. Um, just missing one color, which is the blue. So hopefully X plus later on brings out the blue. Um, I wish they would have just done them all at the same time and just like came under a pack, but you actually had to buy these individually, which really kind of sucked. Um, I get it. They're trying to get, you know, every bit of money they can for these figures, but I think it would just would have been better if they would have made a three pack for all of the colors and stuff like that. And the colors are for like the rankings, uh, for their society, I guess. Um, you know, blue is, um, I think one of the lower tier, um, and then it's yellow and then orange is the, the leader kind of thing. Um. So yeah, it, it's really cool. Like I said, just missing the blue, but it's okay for now. Um, you know, hopefully later on, they'll probably reissue these guys with a blue, uh, which kind of sucks because I don't I only need the blue. So might have to buy them all over again, but who knows? We'll see. Um, but yeah, just super cool. I just love these figures. Um, they're just, they're excellent. I love this line. This line has so much potential to it. It's just going to be amazing. Um, I love that. This figure is a little bit differently than the yellow. Uh, his, like, as you can see, his arm is out a little bit and stuff like that. It's completely different. And and also, too, uh, the cape does come off, so you can kind of see him without the cape and everything like that. Um, not much articulation with him, a little bit uh, with the arms, a little, little, um, but they are very, very stiff. Um, the feet, you can actually articulate. Those are nice and movable and stuff like that, especially... When you're trying to stand them up and everything, you don't want them to fall down. So that's nice that you can adjust them and everything. Um, but yeah, not too much articulation, not much going on here. Um, you know, the arm can't really move that well on everything, but I just like that his arm is up. That's different because he's like talking, you know, and stuff like that. Um, the helmet stays on and everything. So that's kind of there. Um, but at least the the cape can come off of both colors. So you can, you know, if you really want them to display them like that, you can. But it's just a simple snap of the of the cape to go back on and stuff like that and take off. So it's really, really easy, but really cool. Um, and like I said, I like that both of them are very different um, for their poses and everything. This guy is just kind of arms down and everything. Um, so not much going on. You cannot take out the gun. Um, that is, you cannot take that out. That is permanently in there so you can't um pose them with that which sucks um but you know it is what it is and then for both of them you have the little card on the back um then they have a little picture of the mysterians and stuff like that so um i'll actually get a card protector and i put them on my cards um i don't take the tags off or anything like that i like to keep them on my figures and stuff like that i just I just think it just means a little bit more and um, I just like having them on there and everything. So um, definitely really, really cool. Um, but yeah, had to show these guys off with my Mulgara because obviously it's the same movie. Um, but yeah, if you guys haven't seen Mysterians, I suggest you check it out. Um, it is definitely a very, very, very underrated movie. Uh, not a lot of people know about it unless you are a crazy tokusatsu kaiju Toho fan that you kind of, you know, gone down the rabbit hole and seen all of Toho's movies and stuff. Um, it's really, really a good movie. It really is. Um, before I ever watched it, I just bought it um, just because I knew I was like, wow, this looks interesting, you know, and everything and bought it at my local Best Buy years and years ago um, of its initial release. Um, and I really loved it. I I was actually very surprised and impressed on the movie itself for never having seen it. And I just bought it and watched it. And I was like, wow, this is actually really amazing. Um, hope that you guys go and check it out. 
Um, the cast is amazing. You have some heavy, heavy hitters in that movie um, that have been in a ton of Toho movies throughout the years and stuff like that. And this is some of their earlier work because, like I said, this was in 1957. So uh, this was three years after uh, Gojira 54. Uh, so a lot of those guys, uh, you know, came back and did multiple Toho movies and stuff like that. So it, it they have some really significant people in that movie. So check it out. It's a it's a great story. Um, you know, it's got great special effects. I mean, everything about it is just awesome. Toho's better uh, grossing movies, actually. Uh, in that year, it was the second largest grossing movie in 1957. So uh, that kind of speaks volumes for all their movies that they had uh, that year. Um, this was also the first uh, Ishiro Honda and E.G. Tsuburaya's um, together uh, it was their first in color and Toho scope movie um, that was released and stuff like that. So that means a lot. Um, obviously, those guys are legends. I mean, they have built Toho and everything. Everybody knows who they are and what they represent for this genre and everything like that. So uh, the, their names attached to it, obviously, uh, it should be a must uh, watch for any kaiju fan, really. Um, and it's just, I, I won't spoil any of the movie for you and everything, uh, but I just highly recommend it. It is a good movie uh, overall. And it is a movie that um, shortly after, you know, World War II and stuff like that, um, it just seemed like Japan was trying to show people that, you know, we weren't all enemies and stuff like that. Because in this movie, it showed that even Japan... Uh, asked for like the United Nations help from other nations and stuff like that to really show um, that man as a whole can work together to fight off a, an invading species, you know, kind of thing. And they were really trying to convey that and just say, hey, you know, we are all one, you know, we don't need to fight anymore. You know, that's all behind us kind of thing. And let's just show that we can all come together and overcome, you know, adversity and stuff like that. So it had a good message behind the movie and stuff like that. And it was executed beautifully and stuff. Um, and like I said, the special effects in it are really great. It really, really are. Um, and you see some pretty famous um, ships and some and artillery and weapons that uh, maybe people talk about uh, later on and stuff like that. Or maybe you have never even seen it. Or maybe you've heard of it, but you can't put a picture uh, with the actual name. Um, a lot of that stuff's in here and stuff like that. So um, I definitely, definitely highly recommend checking it out. Um, I think you can, might even watch it on YouTube or try to find the movie on like maybe Amazon or, or eBay, something like that. So uh, let's just do a couple size comparisons and then uh, that'll be it. All right, guys, here is my first size comparison, and I have with me the 25 centimeters Mecha Godzilla 1975, Mecha Godzilla 2 to be specific. Um, yeah, obviously, you can tell uh, they are very close together. Um, almost actually, about damn near uh, exactly, uh, which is kind of crazy because this is technically a 30 centimeter figure. Um, so he is quite small. He really, really is. Um, obviously, you can see he looks more like a 25 centimeter figure. Um, but actually, he is even, uh, this Mogera is actually bigger than the 25 centimeter figure, actually. So, um, yeah, a little, little weird on the scaling, I guess, um, you know, kind of thing. But uh, nevertheless, um, he is technically the 30 centimeter. So, uh, just a smaller 30 centimeter and everything, obviously based off of the kit. Um, but yeah, just really, really cool. Just want to show you um, what he looks like to a 25 centimeters, kind of get uh, a scale thing going on here. Um, yeah, it's just, it's super great. You know, obviously you can see with his fellow uh, robots and everything, um, <laughs> trying to destroy the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but yeah, there's one more size comparison that I want to do. And yeah, let's do that right now. All right. <laughs> Look at this. Look at <laughs> And you guys know this is the upgraded, redesigned Heisei Mogera. So we went from this to this. <laughs> oh gosh, just crazy. Um, yeah, it's it is 
night and day. It really, it really is. Oh, uh, you know, you see the inspiration, you see the likeness and everything. Um, but yeah, this, it's almost like this is a completely different uh, robot and everything like that. But, um, yeah, this is, this is where they got the inspiration for it and everything. And you see the, you see the size difference because obviously this is Heisei, this is Showa. And in the Heisei, obviously Godzilla and the monsters were all huge. Like they were just growing, getting bigger and stuff like that. So obviously they had to make their robots a lot bigger too. So, um, like I said, this is the 30 centimeter Mogera um, from the Heisei series. And this is the Mogera from the Showa series. So obviously you can see the big size comparison, the size difference uh, and everything like that. So it is considerably, considerably different. Um, so yeah, it gives you uh, an idea on how big this particular figure is because he is no slouch. He really is not. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to see and everything. And then gets you an idea on how actually big he is, even though he's supposed to be 30, doesn't look like he's exactly 30. So, um, but yeah, just, just a really cool comparison with the old and the new, you know, and, and everything like that. But yeah, like I said, you can see similarities for both of them. You can see the buzz saws in the back, uh, even their kind of stubby tails, um, that are used completely differently. You know, the Heisei was more like an engine kind of thing. Um, this one I don't think really had a, a purpose. Um, you kind of see the treads, you know, from the front um, where you see it all over his front. And then you kind of kind of see it here on his thighs and his shoulders. Obviously the drill beak kind of thing and whatnot. Um, obviously the arms are the same. So yeah, you know, it, it is... It is like <laughs> grandpa <laughs> and his son, you know, kind of thing going on. So, um, but yeah, that's it. So, all right, guys. Yeah, that is it for me now. Uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate all the support. Keep following for 500 subscribers doing my next giveaway of the X plus 25 centimeter Rodan 2019 Rick edition and the Mondo Terra Mechagodzilla puzzle. So, Keep a lookout for that. We are really, really close. I think we're only like 15, 16 uh, subscribers away. So we are almost there. Share it with everybody um, that hasn't already subscribed, you know, and everything. Get into a free giveaway. So, but yeah, thank you. And remember, like, comment, subscribe. You know, leave me leave a comment on what you think of this Mogera or even the Mysterians or even the, the movie, The Mysterians. If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, you know, what do you think of it? Um, like I said, definitely a good movie. Check it out. Highly recommend it. Um, go follow the Monsters with Attitude YouTube channel. Um, we are doing a video this month, and we are talking about Zone Fighter. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I am a big Zone Fighter fan. I just love it. It's, it's very unappreciated. Another one that's unappreciated, just like this movie here. Um, so yeah, go, um, check that out. Uh, the 23rd, I think is next Saturday. Actually, uh, we will be doing one at seven central. Uh, that is when our stream starts. So hope to see everybody there. And of course, go follow and join our Facebook page, uh, monsters with attitude collectors group and become a member there. Uh, we do themes and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun trying to build a great community there and everything to go along with our YouTube channel. So, um, but yeah, all that spiel is done. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. And as always later.